Hi, welcome to the Page Family Homestead. Today, um, I said on the last video, we are pensioners. We shop once a month, so we still get little bits of things here and there that we need, you know, like maybe milk or something, or maybe I didn't get enough butter, whatever, loose ends. The main staples we try to buy in bulk at the beginning or in large quantities at the beginning of the month. So I sent Andy to the store for some bread flour. Lovey. <laughs> Got me one, two, three, um, four jars of all-purpose flour and enough for me to do two jars of bread flour plus what I have in here. What I have in here I'm going to use. I'm going to put this bag, if I don't need it, back in the freezer. Um, until I rotate. I always rotate my flour. Um, the reason I even can, that's what we're doing, canning, dry canning flour. Um, it doesn't matter what facility or what mill you get your flour from. It is virtually impossible for them to guarantee 100% um, no weevils or no weevil eggs. The government actually allows permits, turns a blind eye, whatever terminology you want to use, to a certain percentage of them. So you don't need to can it to get rid of them. You can keep your flour in the freezer, which I like to do and quite often resort to. However, you got to take it out, you know, when you're making certain things and baking, you got to bring it to room temperature. And quite honestly, my pantry has more um, storage space in my freezer facility. So, um, freezer is very expensive real estate for me. So, I'm going to can them. By canning them, uh, by freezing them, sorry, for at least a week, you get rid of all the weevil evils, okay? Um, you can keep it in the freezer if that's what you still like to do. Myself, not so much. I need that space. So, I put it in the freezer for, I think, two days because I don't need to keep it in for a week right now. I just needed to keep it there until I could get to it so I could do this. By canning, I think flour has a three-year um, shelf, shelf life, life um, in, in regular conditions like this. And then it starts to not work as nice and break down. By doing this, people have been using it for five, seven um, I know people use it for 10, but I hear it starts to degrade around between 5 and 7. Again, depending on the temperature of your storage or what have you, right? There's a lot of variables, but it keeps it fresh. So the only bad thing about it is when I take it out of the jars because it's heat sealing. Um, it's only for dry and only for certain dry, not for wet at all. Do not ever do this with wet, only the dry. Um, it sucks the air when you when we after baking it in the oven not baking heating it in the oven at 200 degrees they say one hour i've always just done one and a half hours it's just that's a lot of volume in there and we pounce it down to keep the air out of it i don't smash it on there i just pounce it with my heel of my hand right make sure we can get i'm going to top that up a bit they say about half an inch head space because you want the heat to pull that lid down to give you the seal. I then leave the ring on after I take it out of the oven. I put them on right right away and leave it and like boom within 20 minutes they're sealed but definitely leave it like the old rule overnight. Take my rings off that way if there's ever a false seal I got it. I'm on it because I, I check all my my jars but I'm getting way ahead of my sales. So I'm going to put these in the oven at 200 degrees. I think it's 211, 212 for boiling, right? Um, we don't need to boil. We don't need to sanitize. Why? Because I already did. I've already sanitized my jars, had them in the oven to dry. 
these jars must more than anything be so dry you don't want any oh. <laughs> you Inhale don't... that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want any moisture <laughs> you're stepping back huh you don't want any moisture because they're going to get mold so we're here to preserve not ruin right <laughs> You just can't get over that. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> Take a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to top them up a little bit. Now, you know how when you're canning, you have to wipe the rim with some a, a damp cloth or paper towel. Make sure there's nothing on them. We're still going to do that, but not with a damp cloth. I'm going to use a dry paper towel. My husband came in from shopping earlier and saw me doing this. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I resorted to this and I'm going to stupidly tell you why. Because I blew on the other one. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to put these in my oven. Very bottom rack. I've already got the other rack out of the oven, and I'm going to shut that door and leave it at there, 200 degrees Fahrenheit, for an hour and a half, and then I'll bring you back. Oh, um, everybody's always wondering, what do you do with, where'd my tape go? Do you what, sorry? My, uh... Tape. Yeah. Put it in the drawer. tape. I must have. Uh, <coughs> wanted to show you. Um, I hate the labels that come with the jars or some of the labels that you can even buy. Try and get those things off, you know. Um, my life is busy enough. I don't need to sit there at the sink and pick, 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 pick. So, I use painter's tape from the dollar store. It's awesome stuff. I mean, I'm putting these in the oven so I can know which one's bread, which one's all-purpose flour. And after I'm done with the jar, I just peel that off and boom. You know, if you're Good gifting, idea. you want something nicer. But if it's just for my pantry in there and the only one that's going to see it is Andy and myself, who cares, right? All for making your job easier. I'm going to let you go. We're going to pause and hour and a half. Okay, the alarm just went off. They've been in for an hour and a half. They're hot. I've got a damp, not wet tea towel. I just want to do the top. I just want to make sure I dipped it in there. I just want to make sure that none of this flour is sitting on the top here. I'm going to break my seal. So, slap them on. This is a good time to reuse your perfectly good lids that you don't trust to reuse for canning. Put them on good and snug. Whereas before you put them on finger tight, this time, snug. They're hot. I'll be right back. Whoa, I need my... Oh, look at <laughs> If you're not used to doing this, you should do one jar at a time. But I've been doing this for years, so I'm just going to get on it. The only negative thing, like I said earlier, the only negative thing about canning your flour, you have to sift it because it clumps. Somebody will say, no, it does Yes, it does. It <laughs> clumps. It's a clumper. <laughs> it's not a big deal. I just take one of these things here, put it in there, shake it out, and... If it's got a stubborn one, then I just run it through, use my hands. So there we have it. Two hundred degrees, hour and a half. Put it on nice and tight after you've wiped the rim. We have two bread flour and four all-purpose flour. Tomorrow, I'm going to remove the rings make sure that they're sealed they will be trust me and then one Whoa, just sealed one just popped. <laughs> and then i'm going to so remove the rings so that i can check them to make sure that the seals don't ever crack on them 
that I can uh, keep them for long-term storage. They are dated, they are labeled, and I can tuck them away. Let me try and see. It's okay. Oh. I got it. <laughs> so there you have it. My freezer doesn't have flour in it. Well, one little bag, but I'm just going to do up some bread every day now. So that'll be in here in no time. And when that's done, I'll just get this in there, right? Rotate. So now you have it. You can do this with your rice, beans, dry beans. Uh, oh, God. Check, check uh, YouTube University, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a nice way to free up the freezer and keep the weevils out of your food. Thanks for joining us. Thumbs up, subscribe, see you in the comments.